Hi, and welcome to Jules Veto's Photo Focus. Today I'm going to be taking you on a tour of the Pentax Spotmatic 2, 35mm single lens reflex camera. This camera was introduced in 1971 and it replaced the original Pentax Spotmatic from 1964. So we're going to go over all the features and controls on this camera and I will point out the differences between it and the original Spotmatic. As usual, when I do a video on features, controls, and how a camera works, I always start on the top right of the camera as you hold the camera. So right here we have our shutter speed dial and we have shutter speeds, now let's start at this end, from B all the way up to one one thousandth of a second. You can't set them in between speeds, okay? Just set them at the click stop speed. You will notice one sixtieth of a second is marked with an X. That is your shutter speed for electronic flash. It is the highest speed you can use for electronic flash. We also note on the, oh, one other thing I should point out on the shutter speed dial, which uh, I don't know that it's unique, but I know a lot of cameras, if you get to, let's say, one thousandth of a second, and now you want to swing around and go to one of the slower speeds, you have to go all the way around. Not with the Spotmatic. This thing turns 360 degrees, so right now we're at a thousandth of a second. Just a couple little turns, and we're at one second. Okay? You will also notice here, uh, it says ASA, or as we call it today, ISO. This camera has speeds from 20, ISO of 20, up to 3200. The Spotmatic only went to 1600. To change that, you just lift this ring and you just turn, you just turn that ring around the shutter speed dial to change your ISO. We're going to just, um, let's leave it set to 400. To the right of the shutter speed dial, we have our shutter release, and it is threaded for a standard cable release. Shutter release on the Spotmatic is very smooth. All right, one other thing I just want to show you on the shutter speed dial I forgot to mention. Um, you will note a little window, kind of in the shape of an arrow here. You notice when I turned it to a quarter of a second, it turned red. What that means is that that speed of a quarter of a second with the ISO that is set means a meter is out of range. It will not meter uh, at a quarter of a second with a 400 speed film. Okay, just tells you that your meter, uh, the meter is out of range. All right, let's get it back to 1 125th of a second. All right, now back over here we have our Advanced lever, about 160 degree throw to advance film, cock the shutter, and advance the frame counter. You could also use several shorter strokes. Okay. Now you also notice another little tiny window here, a little round window. All right, when the shutter is cocked, that window turns red. When we release the shutter, it goes clear. One thing to keep in mind is if you're going to store the camera, don't store it with the shutter cocked. Just release the shutter and then store your camera. Okay, so that's it for this side of the camera. Let's jump over to the left side. Again, very simple. We have our rewind knob and crank. We can just unfold that here to rewind film by turning it in the direction of the arrow. More about that later. You will notice that around the rewind knob, at the top here, it, uh, it says film, and there's these two little tabs. Actually, they're pretty hard to turn. Got to use two fingers, but now I'm going to turn them. Okay, right now it says EMP for empty. Okay, 36, 20, and we also have a 36 and 20 in white and then we have it in green as well. So the white I would use if you have black and white film in the camera. Uh, the red one you can use for the color print film or the green one for color slide, whatever makes sense to you. Uh, it 
It doesn't do anything. It's just a reminder of what type of film you have in the camera. Okay, there's one other thing you have here around your rewind knob, and that is, it says shoe contact. Right now it's set on the red X. Could also be set, if we just turn it, it's a little hard to turn, which is good. It says FP. That's for bulbs. Never move it. You're probably not going to be using bulbs. I don't even know if they're made anymore. So you're always going to leave it on X. And that is for what we're coming to next, the hot shoe. Okay, the Pentax Spotmatic, the original Spotmatic, had no shoe. There was an accessory cold shoe you could add to the camera. But this has a hot shoe. And that, in my opinion, is probably the biggest improvement, the best improvement uh, between the Spotmatic and the Spotmatic 2. So you make sure your shoe contact here is set to X and then you could slide in a hot shoe flash. Okay, so now let's come over to the right side front of the camera. And the only thing we have here is our self timer. And we're just gonna wind it out. I think it goes up to about 12 seconds. It'll give you about 12 seconds. Now the shutter is cocked, make sure of that. And to activate it, we just press that little button. All right, we could use that if we have the camera on a tripod and don't have a cable release. We could use it if we want to jump in the picture. Of course, the camera is going to be on a tripod. All right, so it released the shutter. Now, let's say that we decide to use a self timer. You know what? I'm going to get in this picture. So I wind it down. And then I say, oh, you know what? I don't want to get in this picture. I want to take another picture of you guys first. So you just take the picture with the shutter release. Now you got a self timer stuck down there, right? Well, not really, you don't have to use it. Just don't advance the film. So you have to take in that picture with the shutter release, don't advance the film. Okay, so we just press the button. Remember the camera, the shutter is not cocked, the film has not been advanced. So it's just gonna wind down and it's not going to release the shutter. Okay? All right. Um, Let's come over to this side, then we'll talk about the lens mount. On this side, pretty simple. We just have two PC outlets. The bottom one is for electronic flash. It's marked X. The one above that is marked FP. That is for flash bulbs. So that is for a flash that doesn't have a hot shoe, studio flash, any type of flash that requires it to be plugged in. So you use the bottom one for electronic flash, okay? The other thing we have here is a switch marked SW. We just push that up. What that does is it turns on the meter, stops down the lens. Okay, well, I have this lens actually set right now for, I have it wide open. Let me just show you here. All right, so see, when, once you press that up, the meter switch pressing it up towards the top of the camera, it stops down the lens and turns on the meter. Now, this camera uses what's called stop down metering. You are at full aperture until you turn that meter switch on. It stops down the lens. You then adjust either your shutter speed or your lens aperture to center a needle on the right side of the viewfinder. When that needle is centered, you have correct exposure. This camera uses two CDS cells to measure the entire picture area and it gives you an averaging reading. We're going to talk about the lens mount in a minute. Let me just finish uh, with the, uh, let's just talk about the bottom of the camera. Well here's of course our viewfinder, pretty simple, that's it on that side. And on the bottom we have our battery compartment this camera took a 1.35 volt PX400 Mercury battery. Mercury batteries are no longer made. You can find a wine cell, air cell. Uh, they work, they have the proper voltage. However, they have a very limited life. You could also have the camera modified to take a different type of battery, I believe a silver battery. Uh, here's your tripod socket. And here's your rewind button. You just press that in when it's time to rewind film. We'll talk more about that when I show you how to load film.
Okay, now let's talk about the lens and the lens mount. As we already talked about, there were some improvements made between the Spotmatic and the Spotmatic 2. But one of the big things didn't really involve the camera at all. It involved the lenses. And when this camera was introduced, Pentax also in introduced the super multi-coated Takamar lens line. They said it they were the first lenses to be multi-coated. Actually, I believe Nikon had a few multi-coated lenses before that. I, I believe the 28 2.0. I even think Minolta did. But they never really talked it up. But Pentax made a big thing of it. And then that started the whole trend of multi-coated lenses for just about every manufacturer. Okay, so it's a screw. It's an M42 screw mount lens. Okay, there are hundreds and hundreds of lenses available in this M42 screw mount. Very simple design, very well made, these Takamar lenses. Okay, a little slow to mount a screw thread lens, but not really a problem. Not as quick as a bayonet mount. Yashica, Mamaya, some German cam camera manufacturers, Russian cameras used the M42 screw mount. So there are, again, lots and lots of lenses available in the used market. Again, pretty simple design. They're very well made. Metal focus ring, all metal construction. They have half click stops. And there's also a switch on the lens. Right now it's set for auto. When it's set for auto, the lens is at full aperture until the moment of exposure when it stops down to your set aperture. When you have it set to manual, the lens is stopped down. Okay, and you can see that, I hope. I'll switch it back to auto. Okay, you see when it's on auto, I'm set to 5.6. Now I'm at 16. Lens stays wide open for a brighter view and for focusing. Okay, so why don't we show you how to load film? Okay, before you load a roll of film, and one thing, with this reminder dial here, I never used any camera that had a reminder dial. I didn't use it because you forget, oh, did I set it or didn't I? But, so the most important thing is make sure when you're about to open the back of the camera that there's not a roll of film inside, okay? So, you know, what if you have it set for empty but you actually had a roll in there? So what you do, a simple thing to do, just unfold your rewind crank and just turn your rewind crank a little bit in the direction of the arrow. If it turns freely, okay, you see how freely that's turning? There's no resistance at all. That means there's no film in the camera. All right, so to open the back, what we're going to do is we're just going to turn the camera over and we're going to pull up on our rewind knob. The back springs open. And while we're looking at the back, let me just bring it over a little bit so you can see. Um, you will notice a roller here. This was an addition to the Spotmatic 2. It helps to keep the film flat. Just like the previous Spotmatic, it has a rubberized cloth, horizontal traveling focal plane shutter. All right, so now we're going to load the camera. Drop the film down on, the, on this side. Okay. Now, you know, one curious thing I noticed is this camera has two slots in the take-up spool. The original Spotmatic had four. Not a big deal. So you just slip the film into one of these two slots on the take-up spool. And uh, a little hard to do in the position I am in. Usually I would have the camera kind of in my lap to do this. All right, so slip it in. All right, and just advance a little bit of film. Make sure it engages. And you want to make sure that the sprocket holes engage the sprocket gears on the top and bottom. When you're sure of that, you could close the back. You could also, if you want, turn the rewind knob a little just to take up a little slack, but doesn't seem to be any slack here. So you close the back, turn the camera back over. Do not fold down your rewind crank. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to have to make a few blanks to get rid of that film that was exposed to light when we were loading, okay? So, do one, another one, and it's, you'll note the film counter is saying zero, but also I want you to note the rewind crank. 
as I do this. Okay, you see how it's turning? All right, and now we're ready for frame number one. All right, and the important thing with that is if it's not turning, if as you advance that film, let's do it again. See how it's turning? All right. If it wasn't turning, that would mean that the film did not catch on the take-up spool, and you'd be taking a bunch of pictures, but the film would have never advanced through the camera, so you'd be really disappointed. So the important thing, just make sure that's turning. If it's not turning, as you advance the film, when you first load it, open up the back, re you know, put it back into the take-up spool. All right, so at the end of the roll, we're going to turn the camera over. We're going to press in the rewind button on the bottom. And then we're going to take our rewind crank, unfold it. And now you'll feel some resistance. Now, I don't want to rewind this all the way in because I use this for demonstration of how to load cameras. You hear like a little click. You can feel it pull off. Once that happens, just pull up on your rewind knob. Okay, and there we go. Now, two things. One, you're going to rewind it all the way in. All right, I'm going to take our roll out. And so you're going to rewind it all the way in. Just keep rewinding until you feel no tension at all. And I just wanted to mention, when you're loading, do not touch the shutter curtain. It can cause some damage. Okay? All right. So we're now going to send our film off to be processed. And hopefully you got some great shots. All right, so that's it for the Pentax Spotmatic 2. These cameras are readily available on the used market eBay, the larger camera stores that have big selection of used cameras. These are very well-made cameras. They're also beautiful to look at. I think these are some of the most beautiful single-lens reflex cameras ever made. This whole Pentax Spotmatic series. And you could get them at reasonable price. I, I paid very little for this. It was an as-is. It's not working perfectly well, but I just wanted to own one. I always wanted one. I had an original Spotmatic back in the day. In fact, it was my first camera with through the lens metering and always wanted a Spotmatic too. Never got around to buying one. Well, because I couldn't afford one at the time. And uh, so I picked this one up very inexpensively, I think for 20 bucks. But you should have no trouble finding one in good working order. In good working order, except for the meter. The two Pentax Spotmatics I have, the meters don't work. Not unusual for a camera from the 60s or 70s with CDS cell meters. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions on the Pentax Spotmatic 2, please leave a comment in the comments below. I try to respond to all comments. Or you could even email me your question. I publish a new video every Monday morning at 11 a.m and also on Wednesday mornings at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. So I will talk to you then.